Alright, greetings class. Today we're going to be talking about lesson 24, which is on radians and right triangle trigonometry, which no, you can't read that. Okay. Now, I know students tend to dislike this uh, topic when they first learn it, have a lot of trouble with the trig stuff. We're going to try and make it as painless as possible because there's a, a level of trig that I think most people can actually work their way through without too much trouble. Okay, it's just a bunch of ratios, essentially. Okay, that's essentially what, what trigonometry is. So trig is a bunch of ratios. Specifically, what it does is it takes our right triangle, okay, where if we have legs A, B, and C, we know from the Pythagorean theorem right, that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay. And we also know that if we have angles inside here, let's say we have the angle, um, I think the homework uses capital letters, but uh, actually let me call this one A and this one B so that they're across from their lowercase letters. Um, and we also know that the angles, say, A degrees plus B degrees plus 90 degrees, because we have a 90 degree triangle, all the angles inside of a triangle have to sum up to be 180 degrees. Okay, so these are the things that we got from normal geometry. We had a lot of properties where we could find all the missing pieces in a um, triangle if we had some of the other ones. Well, what trig does is trig completes our right triangle information, okay? Because um, these are kind of separate, right? The angle information and the side information are separate. So what trig does is trig relates angles to sides, okay? And, I mean, there's so much you can talk about when it comes to trig, right? You can um, you can do entire courses on just trigonometry and, and probably not even talk about everything that you can do there. Um, but as far as what the general person needs, and you know, these are things that actually do pop up uh, in construction and, and uh, surveying and things like that. Um, what your average person can, how they can use it, really comes from this. It relates the angles to sides, okay, um, in a right triangle. All right, so what we're going to do is, of course, define all the things and show how that works. But just remember, all a trig function does is gives a, a ratio of sides, right? It takes your trig function is going to take an angle and give you a ratio of sides. And that's basically how it works. There are, of course, more formal ways to define these, but like I said, for what your average person needs, how they're going to use it, that's what it is. So all it does is it just completes the whole triangle for you, that you now get all the tools you need to, if you have two pieces of information, no matter what those two pieces are, you can actually find everything else you might need. Okay? As you saw from the beginning, we started, or the title is Radians in Right Triangle Trigonometry. So, um, first we need to talk a little bit about what radians are. Okay, radians is another form of angle measurement. Um, and how it works is radians um, allow us to do things like graph trig functions, 
um, deal with them mathematically as expressions. And um, I'll just say it like this, radians play nicer with math and physics equations and specifically math and physics trig equations. Okay. The math is much nicer. When you need to look at the graphs it's much nicer because it keeps your um, important information between um, two, uh, between zero and about six and some stuff. Okay, so versus um, degrees which would go from zero to 360 degrees. Okay, so um, what happens is I think a lot of people when they first see radians they don't like them and they prefer degrees. But being able to switch back and forth is going to be um, really important when we start talking about trigonometry. Okay, and that has a lot to do with just radians are nicer, mathematically speaking. They are just much nicer. They might not look like it at first, but they behave a lot nicer. And they're a continuous measurement versus a discrete measurement. Okay, um, so radians and I'll just say are naturally a discrete um, I guess I use, sorry not a discrete, they're naturally a continuous measurement okay and, and that's just that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail there, but that's part of what makes them so nice. Is it's um, a continuous variable versus degrees, which are discrete. A degree is what we did to form degrees is we basically took a full rotation and chopped it into 360 pieces and called each piece a degree. And then we went further and we chopped each degree into more pieces when we called them um, minutes and seconds and things like that whereas radians actually are a nice continuous we can actually find um, a radian measure of really any angle it doesn't have to be a discrete chopping things into a finite number of pieces okay anyway what we need to know for what we're doing okay is really the conversion factors okay so the conversion is what's really important and like I said, the thing about trig is we could spend uh, an entire class on this stuff, all right? And we're going to be spending a few lessons. So we're not going to go very deeply into a lot of this stuff. Um, but the conversion factor, okay, is this, that pi radians, okay, is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, and it has to do a lot with the circumference of a circle. Um, we know that the full, so if we have a circle here, if we go around the entire circle, the circumference is 2 pi r. Okay. Um, and that, that sort of 2 pi, that 2 pi corresponds to a hun or a 360 degrees, right? Because we made the full rotation. So this is, a f probably shouldn't say approximately, these are actually equal, okay, or equivalent. Let me put an equivalent. And um, this is equal to a full rotation. When we divide both sides by 2, we get that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Okay? So from here, we can actually convert back and forth as needed. Okay, well, quick fire, do a few of these. Um, we're going to convert from whatever unit we have to the other one. So here I have 225 degrees. I want to convert to radians. Okay, so what we do is we use the fact that pi is equal to 180 radians 
or uh, other way around, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, uh, which means that, remember, I want radians on top, okay? So that's what I want to keep, and I want to get rid of degrees, so I'll put that on the bottom. Okay, well, 225 divided by 180 ends up being Okay, so what we get here is we can take, okay, so we can actually take, there are a few things we can take out of both of these. Um, what it actually ends up being is a 45, because 45 um, times 5 gives us 225, okay. And 180, if I take 45 out of it, I'm left with 4. So if you're ever curious of how you can actually simplify these things, um, you, you can use your calculator. Your calculator actually helps with this. Um, but you, you have to be a little familiar with how, you know, how to uh, mitigate fractions and stuff. But we get 5 pi over 4 radians. Okay, so 225 degrees is 5 pi over 4 radians. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with 300 degrees. So 300 degrees, I'll multiply by pi radians over 180 degrees. And this one, I think, is a little um, nicer to start with. I can take, you know, cancel out the, the zeros to begin with. So I have 30 pi over 18. And we could take 2 out of both of these. Um, so we would get 15 pi over 9. Okay. And now we can take 3 out of both of these and get 5 pi over 3. Okay. So I showed a little more steps there is how I got that. I just took out what I saw in each step. So you can either go straight to it like we did here or do it in steps as you go. Okay. When we have, when we start with radians, and this is how, um, this is how I remember this stuff. Um, if I want to go to radians, I want a pi, so it's going to be on top. When I want to leave radians, I want to get rid of the pi, so the pi is going to go on the bottom. And that will give us degrees, and the radians will cancel, the pi's will cancel, and it will be 180 divided by 12 degrees. Okay? So, um, here, 180 divided by 12, that's going to give us 15 degrees. Okay, so pi over 12 radians ends up being 15 degrees. Um, same here. I'm going to take 180 degrees, divide it by the pi radians, so that my radians and the pi's cancel. Alright, and so now it's just going to be 7 times 180 degrees divided by 4 is what we have left over. 180 divided by 4 is 45. Okay, that's going to be 7 times 45 degrees. And 7 times 45 degrees is 315 degrees. Okay, so um, there we go. 7 pi over 4 radians is 315 degrees. Alright, sometimes things aren't going to cancel out nicely, like 23 degrees, if we wanted to convert that into radians, um, it's not going to play nice, necessarily. Uh, the 23 over 180 does not, um, doesn't simplify down at all. It does come out to be a decimal, and so sometimes it will ask you, like your homework will ask you to round two decimal places. So, I'll do that now. 23 pi divided by 180 
Now what I want to show you is we're done just representing pi as just 3.14, okay? We have a pi button. It's here above the power button, right? You do second that, and we are, we're going to use that from now on. We are not going to um, just round this to 3.14, okay? Instead, we're going to do this, and if we round to, let's say, three decimal places, we'll get 0 0.401 radians. Okay, so don't fret if these things don't come out to be perfect. Sometimes they won't, and sometimes you will just have to um, round. And the MyLabs Plus will, should tell you. Um, the directions should say round to the nearest two decimal places or round to the nearest three decimal places. Okay, now that we got that radian degree stuff out of the way, what we're going to do now is define our right triangle trigonometry. Okay. So our right triangle trig. So our main trig functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so sine of an angle, we're calling the angle A, is defined as the side opposite over the hypotenuse. So like I said, all, all our trig functions do is take an angle and give us a ratio of sides. So they compare sides to angle. Okay, so here's sine. Okay. What cosine does is it takes the angle A and it spits out the side adjacent. So if we have an angle A in a right triangle, we have a side that's opposite of it, a side that's adjacent to it, and then the hypotenuse. Okay. So cosine will be the side adjacent over the hypotenuse. Finally, tangent, and these are just the main three. We're going to talk about the next three, too. But tangent, which we name T-A-N, of an angle, actually bypass, bypasses the hypotenuse. So if you ever have something where you don't know the hypotenuse, and you don't need the hypotenuse, tangent is going to be the side opposite over the side adjacent. So, like I said, each one of our main um, trig functions is going to give us a ratio of sides. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent can also be defined as sine of A over cosine of A. Okay. This is one of our, we can actually define every trig function in terms of sine and cosine. Okay, so it's actually the division of sine divided by cosine is tangent. Okay, the next three trig functions are all based on the first three. So there's cotangent, which we abbreviate as COT, okay, and it we can define in two ways, okay? If we want to use the um, triangle, it's adjacent, and I'm going to start abbreviating these like this, adjacent over opposite, but it's also cosine over sine. Okay. It's also one over tangent. Okay, these are often called the reciprocal definitions, and it's based on either t by flipping tangent over, dividing co uh, sine, or uh, sorry, dividing cosine by sine instead of the other way around, or straight from the triangle, it's adjacent over opposite. Okay, secant, 
which we abbreviate as SEC, seek of A. Okay. As from the triangle, it's going to be the hypotenuse over the side adjacent. Okay. What this ends up being is 1 over cosine. This is cosine flipped over. So if we go back to our definition of cosine, cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. If we flip that over, we get hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is cosine flipped over. Right? So this is cosine flipped. So secant flips cosine. Okay? Then um, the next one is cosecant. abbreviated as CSC, okay. and that's going to be sine flipped over. So instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it will be hypotenuse over opposite, okay. which will be 1 over sine. So cosecant flips sine. So this is sine flipped. Of course, in this one, this first one we talked about was tangent. Now, one thing to notice here, you might wonder why there's so many of these. We have a trig function for every possible ratio from a triangle. Okay? We have opposite over hypotenuse, but we also have hypotenuse over opposite. We have adjacent over hypotenuse. We also have hypotenuse over adjacent. We have opposite over adjacent, and we also have adjacent over hypotenuse. With three sides to every triangle, but the three sides for a right triangle, we have six different ways we can order them in a fraction or in a ratio. Therefore, we have a trig function for each one of those possibilities. Okay, so what we're going to do in the next for the rest of this lesson is really just use these trig functions in various different triangles to either evaluate them or, you know, what have you. Okay? So, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to start with this triangle here. We have the angle theta in it. This is the Greek letter theta. It looks kind of like a circle with a line in it. A little pokeball for uh, any gamers out there. Um, and or maybe a pill. It looks a little like a pill. Um, so what we're going to do is the directions here are to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. Okay. Then we want to find the value of each trig function of the angle theta. Okay. So we have the side B, which is adjacent to theta. A is missing, and C, which is a hypotenuse. So by the Pythagorean theorem, remember, it says that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Okay? So that's a squared plus 28 squared is equal to 35 squared. Well, these aren't things I know right off the top of my head. So let's see, 28 squared is 784. 35 squared is 1,225. So when I subtract across here, we're trying to find A. So A squared is going to be 2,025 minus 784, which is 441. Then A, remember if A squared is equal to something, then that means A is equal to plus or minus the square root of that something. Square root of 441 is 21. Now we're going to choose <coughs> positive 21. All right, we choose positive because, well, this is the length of a triangle. It's not going to be negative unless we stick this on, say, um, the xy plane and we flip it over into another direction or something. Um, there are cases where you might want to put negatives in a uh, triangle if you are, say, on the x, 
by plane and Cartesian coordinates and you are actually incorporating negative quadrants and stuff like that. Um, but for here, we're going to choose the plus. Okay? So our A now is 21. Alright, All right, so now what we're going to do is just go through and find all of our trig functions. Okay, so here is my completed triangle. And we're just going to go through the list. Alright, so sine is our first one. Sine, remember, is a side opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so theta is here. Opposite is A, which is 21. Hypotenuse is 35. Um, we can actually take some stuff out of this. Um, it looks like. Like 7. Right? So this will be... 7 times 3, this will be 7 times 5, so we get 3 fifths. So sine of theta is 3 fifths. Okay. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. So we'll get adjacent, which is 28 over hypotenuse, which is 35. And once again, we can take sevens out of both of these and get four-fifths. Okay, and then tangent. Tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So notice I'm writing this every time I do it. Um, that actually does help. Um, it helps, at least it always helped me remember things. If I just wrote it every single time, I wouldn't have to try and memorize it. It would just be there eventually. And, you know, that would be that. So, opposite is 21 over adjacent, which is 28. Again, we can take 7s out of everything here, and this will be 3 fourths. Okay. Um, one thing I also want to notice, we also said that tangent, I just want to show this, tangent was also defined as sine over cosine. So we could put sine in, which is 3 fifths, divided by cosine, which is 4 fifths. Then when we take a fraction and divide it by another fraction, that's 3 fifths multiplied by 5 fourths, right? You invert multiply, the fives cancel and you get three-fourths. So whichever definition you want to use, you'll still get three-fourths. Okay? All right, then secant. Well, secant, we could use the fact that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent or we could use the fact that it's cosine theta flipped over. And cosine theta flipped over is going to be 5 fourths. Okay. Well, hang on. Let me double check. Let me actually use the hypotenuse over adjacent. So the hypotenuse was 35. Adjacent was 28. When we take the 7s out of that, that's going to be 5 over 4. Oh, yeah, they match. Okay. So once you've found the main 3, you can actually just start flipping them over to find the next 3. Uh, save you a little time. But it is good to still know this because if you're just asked to find, say, secant theta given a, a particular triangle, um, you're, you don't have these to flip over yet, so if you're starting with this one, you'll, you'll still need to know this. But, um, okay, so cosecant theta, that's um, sine flipped over. So sine, let's go all the way back up here, was 3 fifths, so cosecant should be 5. All right, 
yeah, three fifths, so cosecant theta should be five thirds. And cotangent, cotangent is tangent flipped over. Tangent is three fourths, so cotangent will be four thirds. Okay. So this is the, the method, and let me actually, sorry, write the definition just so we start getting it in our heads, but when you already have the main three, finding the next three, you just flip them all over. It's just making sure you match the right ones. Um, I think it's, um, I think the toughest part, because I think, okay, tangent to cotangent, I think that makes sense to most people, but the fact that secant flips cosine, and that cosecant flips sine, it, you, I think people always feel like it should, shouldn't work that way, it should go the opposite, but, um, Unfortunately, that is where we are, okay? All right, so given a triangle, that's how we find all of the various tree functions of that angle. Like I said, this just gives every ratio of every side of this triangle. Okay, well now we're going to look at a couple of problems where we use this, two of these special triangles. All right, so as you can see, this is a, up a little bit, but this is a 45 by 40, 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. These are two of our really nice triangles that we base a lot of trig properties on. And um, when we look at the directions here, here's what we need to be careful about: is uh, use the given triangles to evaluate the following expression. If necessary, express the value without a square root in the denominator by rationalizing the denominator. So we need to make sure that we rationalize the denominator as we go. So whenever we have this square root of two or this square root of three showing up, um, we don't want it to sit in the denominator. Okay, the other thing we need to be careful about, when we're dealing with 45 degrees, we could use whichever one we want. So we'll typically sit right here because that's what we're used to. But when we use 30, we have to be careful that opposite is now here and adjacent is here, okay? So we'll start with, as we see, it's asking for secant of 45 degrees. So we'll start. Okay, so secant of 45 degrees. Okay, well, secant, if we go back to our definition and um, look, we know it's cosine flipped over. So secant here is hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's cosine flipped over, so it will be hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is what I was talking about in the previous example that we don't have the cosine of 45 degrees right now, right? So well, the best we can do is go straight to the definition instead of finding cosine and flipping it, okay? Um, all right, so secant, hypotenuse, that will be square root of 2 over adjacent, which will be 1. Okay, so note I went to the 45 degree triangle to set this up, so this is going to be square root of 2. So secant of 45 degrees is square root of 2. Okay, let's do cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, and 30 degrees, and this is where we need to be careful because 30 degrees is up here we need to do adjacent, which is now this. We're used to this being opposite, but adjacent, which will be square root of 3, okay, over hypotenuse, which is 2. Okay, so square root of 3 to, over 2. Okay, let's, um, let's do another one. Let's do tangent. Actually, let's do, let's do one of the strange ones. Let's do cotangent. Cotangent of 30 degrees. Okay. So I'm going to go to 30 degrees. Now, cotangent, we need to be careful about that. That's tangent flipped over. So that means it's going to be adjacent over opposite. Okay. So adjacent over opposite. So adjacent here is that square root of 
3. Opposite will be 1, so it's square root 3. Okay. Let's do same function but different angle. Let's say cotangent of 60 degrees. So this is still adjacent over opposite. And 60 now, we're going to look here. Adjacent is 1. Opposite is now the root 3. Now here's where that, that final piece of the thing was. We can't, or I mean, I don't want to say we can't. The directions don't want us to leave the square root of 3 in the denominator. So what we're going to do is rationalize. So we talked about this way, way back, and God, it might have been less than 1 or 2. Um, we're going to take that square root, multiply the top and the bottom by root 3, so that root 3 times root 3 becomes just 3, so we get square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so there we go. That's, um, you know, fighting with a, some of our well-known um, triangles to get trig values of well-known angles. But what if I was told to find something like this, say sine of pi over 3 um, minus sine of pi over 6. Okay. This is not given to us in terms of radians. This, these triangles are. Okay, so we would need to convert these. Alright, so over here on the side, I'll convert both of these angles, pi over 3. Okay, if I want that to be in degrees, so it will be 180 divided by 3, which comes out to be 60 degrees. And then my next angle, pi over 6, I'll multiply by 180 divided by pi. And then 180 divided by 6 is going to be 30 degrees. So this ends up being sine of 30 degrees. Oh, sorry, pi over 3 was a 60. Sine of 60 degrees minus sine of 30 degrees. So all we're going to do is go to our triangle. 60 degrees, sine, remember, is opposite it over here because it's for both opposite over hypotenuse okay so opposite for 60 degrees opposite is square root of 3 hypotenuse is 2 sine okay is again for 30 degrees well now opposite changes opposite is 1 over hypotenuse which is 2 so this is root 3 over 2 minus 1 half which is about as simple as you can get it other than making it a single fraction is root 3 minus 1 all over 2. Okay. But if you have things like this, that is how you deal with them. Convert into degrees, then utilize the triangle to find each value, and notice I set these apart like this, and then subtracted what I got. Okay, here's where trig gets really important. Okay? This is where it becomes really useful. Okay. Say I have this triangle with these two pieces of, of information. Say I know the angle here, 36 degrees, and I know this side here, which is 340 feet. And I want to find this missing side. Okay, So this is one of the things that geometry did not have the tools for without trigonometry. We could find this missing angle but we actually couldn't necessarily find these missing sides without trigonometry. Okay? Now, once we get that side, then we can find the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. So we can actually, if we're able to find this next piece of information, we can find everything. Okay? Here's a type of situation where this actually comes up. Say this is a building. Say it's some building, and I'm 340 feet away from it. And with my surveying tool, I can measure 
the angle of when I look up to the top of the building. So when I look up to the top of the building, I make a 36 degree angle with the ground, okay? which surveying tools are made to measure that, measure angle, stuff like that. Okay, So using trig, we can actually find this missing height. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what what we're dealing with. Okay, so I have 36 degrees, right? So our angle is 36 degrees. I have the side adjacent. Just B. We're missing the opposite. So we want a trig function that relates adjacent and opposite. So we want a trig function okay, that relates adjacent to opposite. Okay. So if we look back at our definition. Original. So we want to use the original three if we can. Okay, if we can, we typically want to. Tangent relates opposite and adjacent. Okay, so tangent so with the and with the angle. So tangent of 36 degrees we know is going to be the side opposite over the side adjacent. The side opposite is A. We don't really know what that is. Actually, let me, let me fill this in on the next line. So the side opposite is A, which we don't know, and the side adjacent is 340 feet. If we move this 340 over, so if we multiply both sides by 340, okay, what happens is we get 340 times tangent, 360 degrees, is equal to A. So we can actually evaluate A as 340 times tangent of 36 degrees. But then the question is, we find this tangent of 36 degrees without a triangle. In fact, this isn't one of our nice angles either, like 30 or 60 or 45. And the thing is, we can use our calculator. Look here. We have sine, we have cosine, and we have tangent. In fact, we have, we should have those on any um, scientific calculator too. Now, here's what we need to make sure of. We're dealing with degrees here. So on a TI, this will work for 84s too, but 83 or 82s. We're going to hit mode. And you see down here, my calculator is set to radians. So I need to move it over to degree. I can't tell you how many times um, a student will get a wrong answer on something. And they didn't check to make sure they were in the right place. Okay, so we'll quit out of this second, quit. Okay. Then I'm just going to type this in as it's given. 340 tangent 36. Now I don't have to put degrees because it already knows that I'm putting degrees in there. Hit enter and we get 247.024 blah blah blah. So A is about 247, if we round to the nearest whole number, in feet. Okay. So that is the trick with trig functions. That's what makes them so powerful is we can find the height of an object without, say, actually measuring it. 
We just need to go out a certain distance, look up, see what angle we get, and using tangent we can complete you know, that information. And we can do the same thing if we were looking for the hypotenuse. We would just use, say, um, cosine instead because we had adjacent and we were looking for hypotenuse. this, I can understand, I can almost hear the questions. What about cosecant? And what about if we have radians? Okay, because we don't have a cosecant button, right? Uh, we have sine, we have cosine, we have tangent, and then you see up here we have these things, but we're not going to talk about those yet. All right, those aren't what you maybe think they are. They're inverse functions. Okay, that's sine, cosine, and tangent, inverse. Um, so here's what we do for cosecant. Remember, cosecant is sine flipped over. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 divided by sine of pi over 12. And this is what I'm going to put in my calculator. Okay, but first, I'm going to make sure I'm in radians. I'm going to go to mode. I'm going to go down to radian. Choose that quit out of that, and I'm going to say 1 divided by sine of pi, so there's our pi button, make sure, again, as I said earlier, make sure you use that, pi divided by 12, and we got about 3.864, if we round to about three decimal places. Again, the directions should tell you what to round to. Alright, so that's about it for uh, this section. Um, it's basically going to focus on uh, finding trig functions either using a triangle or flipping over the other trig functions um, or finding the missing pieces or using a calculator, converting radians to degrees and vice versa. Okay, so it's going to be a hopefully a gentle introduction into trig functions. We're, we're going to try and keep this as um, uh, as nice as possible. I, I know a lot of you are business majors and a lot of you are um, not going to, to, into heavy STEM fields, so you don't need to, to delve super rigorously into um, the whole trig world. But there are things there that are really helpful um, in a lot of different places. Okay, so we're going to hopefully try and focus on those things instead of um, making you fight with a bunch of the stuff the, uh, say, the engineering students would have to do. Okay, so um, that should be it for this lesson. Uh, as always, uh, if you've got questions, let me know, and I'll uh, talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.